All right, let's get to the first part here. So for the first part, what we're going to do, you're gonna need, you don't need that, <laughs> a glue gun. A small one will work fine, just whatever you have. Some kind of pencil, something to draw on, a couple of glue sticks. I've got a little bit of vegetable oil here to use as a release. Now you can make glue gun stencils on pretty much any slick surface. You just need some kind of a release like the vegetable oil to take it off. For this, I'm going to use the, I'm not sure if it's glass or plastic, just be careful, that came with this frame that I bought from the dollar store because I'm gonna end up framing my final piece of artwork in here and we're not gonna need that. So I'm gonna use that for this project. Okay. So let's get this out of here. Now just be careful with this because it could have sharp edges. We don't need that. And I'm gonna put away the frame for when we're all done. Okay. Yeah, it is glass, so be careful. I'm just gonna put it off to the side. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a few, let's go with three simple shapes that I wanna make my glue gun stencils from. I'm only gonna be using one, but while I'm here, I'm just gonna make a couple of extras. Let's start. Maybe I want some kind of a diamond shape. Get a bump on my table underneath. Um, kind of a repeating pattern. That could be a fun shape. Sure. And then I want to make some sort of repeating pattern here. I think I wanna go for some sort of seashell shape. Or it could be a jellyfish, <laughs> it could be anything. All right, okay, so I've got three shapes. Mm, I think I wanna make another one with some circles. And one more. Okay. So the first, you, once you have your drawing down, I don't need this extra paper. That's, we're gonna put that over top. Tape it down if you want to, I probably will, so it doesn't move when I'm trying to work on it. Let's hope my glue gun's ready. Now again, I'm likely only gonna use one, maybe two of these stencils. I just wanna kinda show you how you can use a repeating pattern in your work. But while I'm here, I'm gonna make some extras just because they're always fun to have on hand. So my, my glue gun is ready. And I'm just gonna go ahead, and start laying it out. No, I'm not. I didn't put my release down. Okay, we're gonna let that cool while I go and get this ready. Because this is glass, it's probably gonna lift right up, no problem. But just to be on the safe side, I'm just putting some vegetable oil, that's all it is. I'm just gonna smear it along here, anywhere I might get glue. Um, I'm not gonna use this glass for the end of this project. So what I will do is find a safe way to store it so I can use it in the future when I wanna make some more stencils, okay. Alright, that's not coming off very nicely. 
it's not cold enough. This is why we want the release. And this is why you're watching me, so you can learn from all your mistakes, from all my mistakes. <laughs> uh, the joys of mixed media. Oh, the joys of playing with anything. Okay. I got that good and smeared. Now I'm going to go in and get started. I'm going to trace along my lines. Now this is not an exact science. But we're going for an organic shape in this anyways, so this is going to give me a nice organic shape. here. I'm not touching the glass. I probably could it might make it go a little bit smoother, but it'll also stick the nozzle of the glue gun in there and I really don't want to do that. All right, everything is connected on that one. We're still good for glue. Let's keep going. If you notice an area like right there where it might be a little too thin, it's not a big deal to go add a little more, make it a little thicker. I just find they're a lot easier to work with afterwards if they're thick. They're not quite as flimsy. I'm just about going to have to add another glue stick in there. I'm not worried about getting the little strings happening because I can go clean those off after. So kind of a thin spot right there. Now it doesn't matter how thick or how high I have this part because I'm going to go in with the flat part when I'm doing my relief. If you wanted a little more variation in your texture, you absolutely could go in with the bumpier side. But the most important part for me is just that I have something flat, especially if you're going to use these for stencils that you're going to spray on after. You want it, your stencil to be able to lay flat on the page when you're over spraying it. Kind of close to the edge, so and let's go with our circles. My circles are not coming out very circular, <laughs> but like I said, that's okay. We're going for organic here, so when you're doing an organic shape. You don't really need perfection. Perfection is not exactly organic.
I haven't made a whole lot of these. I'm sure that if I used this tool more often, I'd probably become a lot more steady with it. But the glue in is just not what I usually use. Okay, so I'm going to leave this and let it cool off. And then I'm going to peel off my glue gun stencils. Right here, I see that this is going to end up being really floppy. It's got a really thin spot right there, so I'm just going to add a little more in there to secure it a little better. And I'm going to close it right here, just so it's easier to pick up in the end. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to leave these to cool completely. I'm going to peel them off, and I'm going to give them a quick rinse because I don't want to leave the vegetable oil on them. And I will put this away and we'll come back with your with the next part where we're going to actually be applying the texture paste and then making a relief pattern in it that will end up being part of our final design okay all right i'll be back okay i've gone ahead and removed my stencils i gave them a quick wash and some water a little bit of dish soap just to get that vegetable oil off my square one did break it had a weak point in there I'm not going to throw it out because okay, I can make some funky random shapes with it. So I might use that for another project. I think for this project, I am going to use, I'm for sure going to use this one, possibly that one. This one's a little floppy, so it might be a little difficult to work with, but it would make a great spray mask. So definitely keeping that. So I have an 8x10 canvas just from the dollar store. I'm using the De La Rowney Simply Acrylic Texture Paste. I picked this up at Walmart. If you don't have this on hand, that's okay. You can get those little containers of spackle or hole filler. Those will work too. The reason I'm working on this is because it's a rigid surface and it says right in here that it needs to be applied to a rigid surface because if I use just a regular stretch canvas, it's not rigid, it's too flexible. This, my texture paste would probably crack and it might ruin what I'm trying to do. You could do this on anything. You could even do it on a piece of cardboard. I would suggest that if you're gonna do it on a piece of cardboard or cardstock or something else, that you do make sure that you prepare your surface with some gesso, just so the texture paste has a surface not only to stick to, but also so that anything we apply on top of it, it's not going to get it all soggy. And hopefully the dog is done barking. So I've already got one that I opened up here. Now what I like about these is they do come pre-gessoed, so I don't have to worry about preparing it. I'm just going to get my texture paste. I'm I'm adding a little bit of paint to it, but only because, and you will want a good amount, because um, the way it is right now would be too hard for you to see. So I'm just going to add a little color to it just so that it'll come up easier on the camera. If I don't use it all, and I probably will use it all because this actually uses quite a lot, I'll just save it for another project. Now because this is an acrylic medium you can add acrylic paint to it <clears throat> without having to worry about it if I added a whole ton of acrylic paint I might lose some texture because it won't be quite as stiff but I'm not doing that so I'm just gonna put this off to the side for now and I'm going to grab a spatula sorry for the dog hair And I'm just going to go ahead and cover my canvas with a nice thick layer of this wonderful texture paste. And can you see how stiff or how well the paste holds the shape of whatever you're doing? This makes it yummy and delicious. You know, you don't have to apply it everywhere. And if you're gonna be framing it like I am at the end, you're going to just wanna have your edges cleaner. 
This stuff is sandable, so I can go in and I can sand it down afterwards if it's sticking out too far. I could also do this with a gel medium, a really heavy type of gel medium like this, but I'm not going to get as sharp de as a detail in my impressions as I would with this texture paste. Okay. I've used it all up. Okay, I'm just going to play around with it to give it a little more shape. Because that just gives the finished piece more texture. And you know, I really, this is not thick enough for me. I'm going to mix a little bit more. And because we already have pink in here, I'm not going to worry about adding more paint because you should be able to see just fine with the color I already have in here. Sorry for my groggy voice. I woke up with a cold today. I'm liking it just like that. I wonder how it would dry. And speaking of drying, you do need to let this dry overnight at least. You're going to know it's ready when while it's drying, once it's dry to the touch, like don't stick your fingers in it now, um, when you can touch it, if it feels cold or cool, you know that it still has a bunch of water in it and it's still drying. And it's, you could use um, a heat tool but because this stuff is so thick, I would worry that uh, the layers underneath are not going to have proper curing and drying time. So I really wouldn't recommend that. If you've got the patience, do definitely let it sit overnight. Okay, so I have a nice thick background that's going to take an impression from my stamp. And I'm going to go in with this one first. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip it in water so that it releases a little better. And I'm going to follow the rule of thirds when it comes to painting where you want, you don't want your center of interest to be directly in the middle. So I'm just going to probably lay a shape to just let my, let the eye kind of travel around a little bit. I'm going to use the flat side to do my impression and I'm going to dip it in water first just so it comes off easier. And I think I want to start over here. I'm going to use my spatula again, just to kind of press it in to make sure it takes that shape and lift. Now it might be hard to see what we're doing now, but once we go in and do some color washes, this is really going to pop out and you're, you're just, you're going to fall in love with it. I'm not too worried if I make little dings on there. It's just going to add interest to my final piece. But I do want to be careful when I lift it up. Oh yes, I love those squiggly lines. They're making me very happy. Isn't this fun? Messy, but fun. But I always find messy fun. Maybe not everybody does, but I do. I keep these close together. Where do I want my next one? I want it right there. And, oh, look, I'm not using the bottom part this time. <laughs> I'm actually getting a better impression than when I use the bottom part over there. So let's just keep going. It's working, so let's keep doing it. I don't want it. I don't really want them touching there. I want a little negative space for interest. And I'm just going to stick that in some water so I can clean it off properly and use it again later. Clean off my spatula. Now I said I might go in with this shape. I think it might be too much actually. I'm really happy with this right here. I do want to add a little more 
random bits of interest. So first thing I'm grabbing is a little, one of those little plastic shot glasses I got from the dollar store. Dip it in water and I just want to add maybe a little bit there. Oh, I like that very much. Mm, let's do one over here. Connect it. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to put it aside and let it dry overnight. And I will come back tomorrow and we will get this thing colored and make it beautiful. We're going to make a piece of art. Okay, have a great one, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. All right, my piece has had 24 hours to dry. It probably could have gotten away with it in about 18 hours, but I did leave it a little bit longer. Now I've already started to go in with some gesso because remember I colored the texture paste here. And I just want to dull down some of the color so that it's not the pink is not so apparent when we go on to the next step. I'm not going to color over everything. Because I'm using gesso, it's probably going to take a couple of good coats if I want like a really bright white. I know that I want to keep these seashell -y shapes, so I'm not going to really go in and add too much to them. I'm not aiming for perfection here. That is not what art should be about. If I wanted a perfect picture, I would take a picture. Oh, I'm going over my bubble. You'll notice that because it is so heavily textured, I really have to work it into some areas if I want. It completely covered. Another shape coming in over here. Now I do need to let this dry completely, so I'm going to end the video here. I'm just going to finish it up and then I'm going to hit it with the hair dryer. How far in do I want that to go? And then we'll get started with the washes. Okay. All right, it's all dry. And for mine, I, these do remind me of seashells, so I kind of want to go with like a turquoisey watercolor in the background. So I'm using a little bit of phthalo blue. Phthalo blue and phthalo green blue shade. They're both very pigment rich, intense colors if you go with the artist quality. And I'm going to want a really, really wet brush for this part. But I do want a brush that I can kind of control. So I'm going to spray a little water on my palette because, like I said, I want this to be a really washy effect. I might go with some more water. We'll see. I'm going to dip my brush in water. And I'm just going to start mixing the two colors until I get one that I like. I like this, but I think I need a little more pigment in Yeah. Okay, I'm very happy with this color. Might be a little too thick for what I'm trying to achieve, so just add some more water. Okay, so I know that I want to leave the bubble shapes clear, 
And then, oh, of course we got a piece of dog hair in there. <laughs> All right. Now I do want to keep moving it. I might even spray this entire thing. Yeah. Not too worried about getting color inside of here. If I get color where I don't want it, I can always go back in after and just touch it up with some gesso before I move on. Or I can just leave it and let it add shading and dimension to it. But I do think I want to leave those circles. Nope, I'm going to fill the bin. Now the reason I like the paint nice and watery is because it allows for this wash effect where more of the pigment is going to settle into the areas where there's more texture. It's not all going to sit on the top. Now because I'm adding so much water to this, it really does affect the integrity of the paint. So at the end, before I even varnish anything, I'm going to go over with a coat of gel medium just to really bind that paint pigment where it is. So I don't have to worry about it coming apart later. Okay. Turn it around so it's a little easier and just keep going. already starting to dry over here. I have a dog that's talking to me, so <laughs> once I get this down, I'm going to pause the video, let this dry, and I will take care of my Lola here. Hey Lola, you just could let me finish here. The reason I don't want to stop here is because if I stop and I don't have it all covered while it's still wet, I'm going to end up with some hard edges. And of course, like I said, you can absolutely fix those kinds of things, but if you don't have to, why bother? This brush I'm using is Simply Simmons Half Inch Angle Brush. I like the nice sharp edge gives me. I can get in the fine tip into the small spots. I can lay it flat to cover a lot more area. Oh yeah, isn't that a delicious color? I hope it shows up on camera as pretty as it is. If I want a really, really watery effect, like we're looking down on this from some spot in the ocean, I will definitely go and add a gloss after. I want a little more variation in color, so I'm just going to go in and add a little bit more green to my mix here. You don't want it all to look exactly the same. And again, I'm running into a little bit of drying here, so I'm just going to spritz it real quick again the areas that I want to add the green to. You can see how it's starting to dry, so I'm starting to get some brush shapes, but there's still enough water that it is kind of settling down a bit. And you can also see that the more layers of this color that I put on, the more pigment is getting in those grooves and just adding that really nice texture. I think I just want to add a little bit more here, just to kind of frame it out a little bit.
not too worried about being too intense right now because I can always go in and do a dry brush technique over it after to dull the color down. But see, if I had not gone in and covered it with gesso after using the tinted uh, texture paste, the color would look completely different because this is so translucent. So I'd have the red undertones, which would make these blues I'm using, it would kind of turn everything a little purpley brown. But, and those aren't the colors I'm going for. Okay, I think I'm done with that first layer of wash. My dog has decided to settle down, which is nice. I'm going to just stop the video for a moment while I hit it with a hairdryer, and then I will be back. Okay, so I have hit it with a hairdryer. You'll see there's some shiny spots there. It's not 100% dry, but I'm working on this area next. By the time I get back to here, it should be completely dry. Uh, you'll see, I don't know if you can see this or not. I hope the camera will focus on it. Um, when I sprayed my canvas, when I already had some of the watery paint on there, I did get oversplash. I could go and paint that out with just some gesso to just kind of try and hide it. I'm actually not going to worry about it. It just gives everything a little bit more texture. It's not too glaringly obvious and we're going to be going over it with some paint. Okay, so I'm going to start with a Payne's Gray, I think in the background. Payne's Gray is a, they call it gray, but it's actually more of a bluey black and it's a really good color for shading. I think this time I want to use my more watercolory brush. This is the one in size 12. We'll start with this and see how it goes. So I'm gonna get my brush wet first. I'm not gonna go ahead and spray this. I'm gonna have a really, really wet, wet, watery color when I go in. All right. I'm just gonna go in and fill in all my texture. I'll drop there. Really like how this is pooling right here. I love this technique. It just it's such a beautiful technique. You can make a really complex looking piece of art relatively easy. You get some really stunning results. Now maybe I'll try going in and doing this with craft paints in another video. So I can just show you the difference. Because I know not everyone is going to have artist acrylic, nor are you going to want to go buy it. So I'm letting it just pool in the levels where it is. Not too terribly worried about it. And I'm just going to keep going. You can see the pink is still coming through. It almost gives it like a purpley color. Now the re I want to use the darkest color first because I want the really dark color to settle into all of the ridges to really define the shape. So if you're working with this technique, darker to lighter will make it easier. Oh, now I like how it's just resisted completely and let all that pink come through. That's really pretty. What I love about mixed media, there's all these happy accidents. Things, you can't really plan everything. You can have, I mean, experience will give you some control over the situation, but more often than not, there's gonna be just moments that you don't anticipate. things that you don't anticipate. Like I'm not sure why this one covered so much more darkly than this one over here, but it did. Hi Lola. My puppy has come to say hi again. I 
think she wants attention, but she's just going to have to wait a little bit. She gets more than enough love. Pet, some pets are like that, <laughs> just like children. <laughs> she reminds me of my kids when they were little. Whenever I'd get a phone call, you know, the kids could be quiet all day, but the minute the phone rings and you try talking to someone, all heck breaks loose. Everybody wants your attention. Everyone starts fighting. Just chaos ensues. Yes, Lola, I'm just going to get the rest of this down, and then I'll be yours. Okay. A little too much pink there. A little bit more. Next week when I have my proper light set up here, I will uh, introduce Lola to everyone in a vlog. You can meet my fur baby. And we're almost done with this layer. Again, once I'm done with what I'm doing here, I'm not worrying about the circles right now. I will stop and let it dry before I come back for the next part. If Lola cooperates, I might actually go in and add some white to those bubbles. I want them to be, I want them to look like actual bubbles afterwards. So we're going to go in. I don't know if the mic is picking it up, but she's saying mama. That's how she likes to get my attention. She thinks I'm ignoring her. So the reason I'm using this watercolory brush is because I'm using a really watery paint and I really want the precision of that tip. I'm gonna put my brush in water. Give it a good cleaning. And I'm going to go and let Lola outside. So I'm going to pause for now and I will be back and we'll finish the rest. Okay, hopefully all the puppies are happy from here on in. Uh, first thing I want to do is I said I was going to go in and I just want to add some gesso to My little bubbles, they're going to end up being bubbles in the end. I got too much on my brush there. And strictly because I want the bubbles to pop more at the end of this piece. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now the Payne's gray did end up being quite dark. But like I said, I wanted to do start with dark and work up to light anyhow. I really like how in these spots the pink really came through so it really gives it that water ripply effect. Very happy with that. brush. Okay, so this is dry. So I'm going to go in with my next layer. My next layer, I don't know if I want to go down with a, I might just go with a muted down version of this. So to mute it down, I'm going to add just a, a little bit of I don't have any white fluid acrylic on hand, so I'm just going to use a little bit of white ink. I'm going to put it over here on its own. I don't know if that's on camera or not. Get my round brush again. I'm just going to pick up a bit of that. 
and I'm going to mix them together. Let me just move this so you can see the colors I'm getting. I went a little darker. I'll know when I start putting it down if I want it a little more watery or I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I just want to be starting to work on some highlight spots here. And let's see how that goes. And I just stuck my hand in the gesso. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get myself a little cup of water just to have it handy. Try not to stick my uh, hand in the gesso again. What can I say? I could go in with if I wanted to. I don't know if the camera will pick this up. Put in a little more Payne's Gray and just kind of let those colors bleed together. But the Payne's Gray mixture ended up being so much darker than I had originally anticipated. Put a little in there. And I'm just going to keep going. I almost feel like it needs a little bit of a, a brown in there. Not a heavy brown, but just maybe like s medium brown. Just to make it a little more earthy looking. <laughs> you hear the kids, kids giggling back there. Sorry if my voice drops off for a minute. This is very therapeutic to me. It's almost like meditation. I'm not used to talking while I'm doing this, which is kind of funny because I always have people that want to watch me paint, but when they're standing behind me, I can't do it. It freezes me up, but of course I'm just talking to a camera right now, so you're getting the benefit of that. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush. And I want to make myself, like I said, a little bit of a brownish color. Got some Van Dyke brown. Get a little bit out there. Oh. Instead, I'm going to use Transparent Raw Umber. It's another Liquitex ink. I'm not really thrilled. I think my Van Dyke Brown is separated. Probably because it's been a long time since I used it. Okay. This is almost the same color. Don't want a lot of white in there. I want very, very little white. Now, if you were doing this with watercolor as opposed to acrylic ink, 
Every time you try to put a layer of glazing or color down on it, as soon as it gets wet again, it's going to re-wet and your colors are going to start mixing together. That's one of the reasons why I like the acrylic. Personally, there's lots of people that prefer the watercolor. To use watercolors, I'm just not one of them. Some of the color that I've already laid down may be wet and it might mix a little bit, but it's not going to be too much because it looks like for the most part it's pretty dry. The reason I'm going in with the brown, like I said, is I just want it to look a little more natural and nothing in nature is one solid color. And I just <laughs> dipped my finger in the gesso again. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you can't laugh at yourself, you shouldn't be laughing at anybody else. I myself, I am a tremendous source of amusement. To me. Bear with me, it's a little awkward for me to be trying to reach over. I just want to make sure I can keep it in the camera. Okay, I think I want to let that dry. We'll go back into the bubbles a little bit. And for the bubbles, I want them to look a little bit iridescent. And if you look at a bubble, I'm going to get a different palette because this one's getting kind of wet. And I love the reflective quality that bubbles have. I get that wonderful iridescent. You get the pinks and blues and the purples. So right here I've got a little bit of quinacridone magenta, which is, you can see how nice, how nice pink that is. Now I want it really weak solution because I want to really, really lightly glaze it. I could even go in with a glazing liquid. That might even be a better idea, but for now I'm just going to try it with the water. I just want the slightest hint of the pink. And then while I've got this nice watercolory effect, I'm going to go in with some blue. Now again, like I said, because because I'm watering the paint so much, I'm actually kind of wrecking the integrity of it. I've wetted out the binders too much. If I was going to leave it like this, that would be a problem. But when it's dry, I'm going to go over it with a gel medium just to seal it in there so that it doesn't break down any further. Now, I like actually how much brighter it is there. And I think I just want to go in with a little pink. And just a couple spots. Just to add a little shade. Now I want to add just the littlest bit of blue to those bubbles to give them that like, iridescent quality. There's a tiny bit of acrylic ink. That is a very, very strong blue. Clean my brush. Now I'm going in this one. This is still wet because I want the colors to kind of mix just a little bit, just so you get that iridescent effect. Looks like you would see on a bubble. going. Okay. I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to give everything a good dry because for my next step I'm going to go in and I'm going to dry brush over this just to pick up some more of the texture and to kind of mute it down a little bit because it is a very very strong color. Okay.
So I'll be back. Okay, that's dry and I wanna go in and do a little bit of dry brushing. I'm gonna start with this cream color from Simply Acrylic. I just need a, ugh, it's way more paint than I need. So I've got a dry brush, it has not been wetted. I've also picked a brush that's older and see it was kind of frayed so it's not like super sharp. And I want to take very little paint. I don't know if you can see how thin that is, but I got very little paint on my brush. And I just want to hit it. If you're finding that you're ending up with a bunch of brush strokes in there you don't want, try using a glazing liquid. In fact, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna show you some glazing liquid down here because I want to add some more shadow and depth to down on this area. Okay. So you can see I have very little paint on my brush, but the paint is being picked up by the higher ridges. And it is dulling this back a little bit, which is what I was going for. That's a little too much paint. So I'm hardly touching the surface of the canvas at all. And of course, the more layers of transparent paint that you put on here, the more depth you're gonna end up with as well. A gesso works really nice when you're doing this, but I don't want that really harsh white effect right now. So that's why I've chosen to go with this cream color. If you're working with an artist grade acrylic, this color is called Titan Buff. And it is a great one to work with. I'm gonna use my finger to just get some of those thicker spots out. And I'm gonna go in once this is dry and just add a few highlights to everything. But I'm really quite happy with how this is turning out right now. And you'll notice that by hitting, hitting it with the dry brush, it really brings out a lot of the texture and the detail in the piece. So can you see what I mean by the pinks and the blues? They made that really iridescent, beautiful pattern there. Keep going. Okay, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to grab my glazing liquid and I'm gonna mix maybe a little brown in the Payne's Gray just because I want, I just wanna add shadow right there. Okay, I've got my glazing liquid. This is another golden product. Lots of other companies make it as well. This is just the brand that I've been using forever. And you see how worn out my bottle is. That's because I buy them in big bulk containers and then I just keep refilling these, so. Okay. Do not use in thick applications. Allow it to dry fully before recoating. To modify consistency, use acrylic mediums. Okay. I was just checking because if I wanted to add water to it, I just want to make sure that I'm not ruining it. So I said I wanted to go in with a little bit of the Haynes Gray and the brown. I was going to use that but now it's bleed, bled into itself so. I'm going to lay the Haynes Gray down there because it is such an intense color and I'm going to grab my raw umber again. I just want to drop. I just want my Payne's Gray to have a little bit of shadow. Now, instead of putting a drop of paint in there, I'm just taking a dry brush and I'm just gonna slowly add color to it because I really don't want such a really intense color. Okay, I don't know how well you can see that color kind of a muddy blue, but that's actually what I'm going for because I want some shadow. And then I painted myself with some raw umber, so we're gonna wipe that off. 
I'm always painting myself. And I'm just going to go in and this is a very subtle effect because I have such a tiny amount of the paint in there. But I, like I said, I just want this area to be a little bit shadowier than up here. So I'm just go in on the edges here, blend it in there. If you're finding you're getting brush strokes, just take some paper towel and rub it back. This might take several coats to achieve the, the darkness that I want, but that's okay. And I might even go and just make this one a little bit darker. See, even for a very little amount of the Keen's Gray that I used, it, you can really tell, it, it really picks up in those spots. That pigment gathers nice and deeply. Once I go in and add a glossy medium to this as well, it's really going to make the color pop. I'm not sure for how far down I want to go. So far, so good. A little more over here, maybe a little on the edge there. I don't know if the camera's picking up, but a beautiful turquoisey color is coming out here. But it does look really nice. Now, yes, I could have gone in with some water. But I really want the glazing liquid just makes it a little bit softer. I'm going to go in with a little here, add a little more. You know, that's often all the difference that it takes to take a piece of artwork from something that looks really amateurish to something that looks really professional is just nailing down your shading how to so you don't want all your color just one color across you want interest you want low areas you want bright areas you want dark areas you don't want everything on one solid consistent color once you can start nailing that skill down you've come a really long way and you'll be amazed at how how it improves your work. Because I'm doing this so thinly, it is drying quite quickly in between. If it was not dry in between, if I went in with glazing liquid, glazing liquid really likes to pick up on itself. So make sure it's dry before you go over it again. I really like the depth that's here, but I want it a little bit, a little bit darker right there. You probably can't even see that on camera, but maybe I can see it. And I'm just going in on any spots that look like brilliant white and just kind of touching them down a bit. Oh, got too much on my brush there. Okay, I'm going to stop. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to go and add some highlights on my seashells or rocks or whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to dry brush some gesso. So I just got a little bit of gesso on here and I just want to go in very lightly, make myself some highlights. I'm 
My glazing liquid might be a little too wet there. And my brush is getting just a little bit too dry. Again, I'm imagining that my light is kind of coming definitely from above, and maybe just on a slight angle, so this area is going to be just a little bit darker. So that's kind of what I'm trying to keep in mind when I'm going in with some highlights here. But again, that dry brush just picks up all that texture. too much on my brush there. Now again, you don't have to keep the color all consistent. I can go in with a tiny bit of that cream color as well. of my gesso with that buff color. Got my brush. don't worry I still don't have the highlights down pat <laughs> it's just a matter of practice one day I really need to take a uh, shading class one day one day when I'm not taking five gazillion other classes in school I'm definitely feeling like this is almost done and I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I'm going to go in with a different shaped brush, a smaller one, just for a couple of more highlights. I'm going to get it wet. Just another, it's another flat brush. It's just smaller than the last one I was using. I want to make a couple of really bright spots on there. And you're too bright. I'll just go smudge him with my finger. doing this so subtly you may not even be able to see me as I'm laying the paint down it just changes with layer after layer after layer okay okay 
maybe I'm not quite done. I want to go and add a little more shading here so it's not quite so bright green. To do that, I want to use just a tiny bit of that raw umber again. With lots of water. Now I'm going to use this brush because it's got a nice sharp edge to it and I want to get into those grooves that I created with the texture paste in the glass. So I'm going to get it in there. It just defines the bubbles a little more too. If you go over the edge that's a little, that's okay because this is a raised edge and it's dry. So you can probably just wipe it away with your finger if it's somewhere that you don't want it. I might actually just do a little shading in between these bubbles too. I'm just using that brown that I had. Glaze it a little bit and then blend it in there. Now I'm going to come in with a uh, glossy medium and I don't normally do glossy because it's really hard to photograph but because of the nature of this one I just think it really it needs to have that really glossy finish. Okay, I'm just going to do a little more shadow there. So before I do that, before I finish drying it, I'm going to go ahead and sign my piece and I absolutely want you to sign yours as well because it's really important that you recognize that you really are an artist. It doesn't matter how much skill level you have, how much training you have, how much natural talent you think you have. We're all artists. Every time we create something, we are an artist. Okay, now before I sign it, I need to figure out which way I want it to go. This is a great thing about abstract art is, you know, it's really up to you which way it goes. But I think for me, I like it right here. So I'm going to grab my brass pen. Maybe, maybe I've moved it around so much <laughs> with all these videos I've been <laughs> recording that I don't know where it is. Okay, so I'm not gonna grab my brass pen. I'm gonna grab a number four master stroke. I want the really fine point and I'm just going to use some ink and sign my name. So what color do we wanna go with? I'm just gonna go with a drop of white. If you have a marker and this is completely dry, you could try and use that. Souffle pens work really well. They take quite a beating. I talk about those in the writing implements video. So make sure you come in and sign your work. A little tricky to do this on all this bumpy texture. Brush and water. Okay, I'm gonna hit this with a hair dryer so it's good and dry before I do my layer of gel medium. I'm not gonna use the thick gel medium. I'm actually going to use a, a gloss gel, not a gel, sorry, just a gloss medium. 
it'll flow a little bit better and it'll just make the shine come out a little bit more. If you had a pouring fluid, and unfortunately I'm out right now, I really like the Liquitex pouring medium. If you're into those paint pouring, it makes a really nice glossy glaze over the top. Now, for most mediums, they're not a final picture varnish. You're going to want to go over it when it's completely dry with another spray of varnish just to make sure that nothing yellows and nothing settles into the the gel itself. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, going to dry it, and then I will finish it off with you in the next section here. Okay, so I've got some Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish. That's what I'm going to finish it with. Now it's gonna, it looks very hazy in here. As long as you're not applying it too thickly, it'll dry perfectly clear. If you apply it too thickly, you may end up with some hazing and you don't want that to happen. I'm using a really soft brush because I don't want thick brush strokes in it when I'm done. And I'm gonna go in both directions, multiple directions, because I wanna make sure that it gets in all of the little grooves and all of that texture that we made with the texture paste. Make sure it's not too thick in those areas. And if you're not sure if you've covered everything, tip it up into the light and you'll see any spots that you missed. You know, this is drying really quickly. It is so dry here right now. It's minus 40 degrees Celsius outside right now. So my furnace has been going for days. My forced air furnace and everything is so dry. Getting more brush strokes than I want. You wanna go kind of smoothly, otherwise you're gonna get a lot of air bubbles in there too and that will dull the shine. And it can be a little difficult when you're working on the texture paste though. So just be patient, take your time. I give it a little too much in some areas, so I'll just go back and try and brush it out. I'm gonna let this dry. And then when I come back, I'm going to put it in the frame and show you the finished piece. So if you have played along with me, you've just made yourself a nice piece of art. And I'm really anxious to see what kind of stencils you guys made and the finished product that you ended up with. So if you're a part of the Adventures in Creativity series Facebook group, head over there and post a picture I can't wait to see what you've done. Voila! Now, because this is a gloss medium and varnish, I don't have to go in and varnish after this, which is nice. So once it's dry, it is ready to go. And the great thing about acrylic paint is that it, you know, it's pretty durable. It turns into a plastic when it dries. So if you have a piece of artwork hanging on your wall made out of acrylic paint and it's been sealed properly, you can absolutely go in with a wet, a wet soft cloth with a little bit of soap and give it a good cleaning and then uh, give it a nice rinse off and you don't have to worry about anything being destroyed. All right, I'll be back to show you the final picture. And voila! Now, like I said, because I used gloss, it's, you're going to get a lot of glare off this and I apologize for that. Uh, once I get my new lights in, I will try and get a better picture of you to show, show it on there. So, we've got the dollar store frame that we use the glass to make our stencils on. Of course, I did not put the gloss, the glass back in. I don't want it. It'll just end up sticking to the medium we have on there and it's not necessary. So here is the final piece. So excited how it turned out. 
again, I really, really want to see what you guys do with this little project. And there's many more projects to come. So I hope you stay with me and have fun making some art. Okay. Thanks for joining me on this creative adventure and I will see you next time. Hey everyone, it's Lori. Thanks for watching my video. If you want to take part in the free Adventures in Creativity series, make sure to like and share this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that bell. You know, that bell over there on the right to make sure you don't miss out on the adventures. Is there something you want to see more of or a particular topic you'd like me to cover? Just let me know by leaving a comment below. And if you want to learn more about My Painted Path, be sure to check out the links below this video. Happy creating, everyone!